I was just watching your interview with Chris Pratt, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was a long time ago. We did it in Tokyo. Yeah, so six years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. I was yeah. wondering if you're going to if you're going to drop a beat today also in in the interview as you did. <laughs> <in that interview. laughs> uh, I I was like, um, you know, when I started dropping the beat, obviously we didn't tell him we're going to do this. And the moment I dropped the beat, if you see the video, he kind of looks to the side. He was looking at his agent. I think his uh, manager or agent. and she kind of was like yeah do it do it <laughs> so i thought he really played along he was like yeah, he's, right he's too to cool like, man yeah, i mean yeah. I, i'm not a host usually but um, once in a while when i get like this awesome opportunity like i did will smith and chris pratt i was like hell yeah i love hosting <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right dubai comedy festival is going to be happening here in dubai the first 12th of april to 21st of april i mean we have like stand up meetings from around the world and from india we have someone who's not only just a stand up comedian but he's also like musically inclined and talented and is pretty wow. good looking wow oh, thank you admit. thank you loki so kind of you it is best to launch it once in a while so welcome welcome thank you thank you so that's so sweet of you and and both of you also insanely attractive i just want to add that for the oh. audio listeners <laughs> thank you we're matching also kind of Kind yes, of. yes, yes. Yeah. We're very you know, great. When we talk to you or talk about you on air, we actually talk about two things. Obviously, uh, your comedy and music, because we're both musically inclined. Location oh. with writing, me with singing. So I think we have a little bit in common. Also, you've Sweet. come from the arts background, so we yes. have a little in common actually. Oh wow! What did you do? Like you uh, studied uh, what exactly? Media and communications. Amazing. That's at and, least useful. Yeah. You know, mine is yeah. completely. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I was on radio, so I'm basically doing what I've learned. So that's great. Amazing, amazing. Kenny, you've uh, like I said, you've come from the arts background, and uh, you know you love graphic designing. Is if I'm not mistaken, you've done. I, I, I've already. done. So basically, I studied painting, and uh, I, uh, you do a side subject. I did sculpture as well, and uh, it didn't help in any way with life. But it was awesome and fun, and I met some amazing friends. But uh, graphic design, I got into again just to survive and make some money. I did literally. I think that's the thing with uh, pursuing arts in India. Like, there's no, um, there's no path, there's no step, there's no process, and it's not even encouraged. Like, it's pretty looked down upon. You know, people used to encourage. Like, parents used to meet me and be like, "Wow, so nice, you're doing arts." And if their own children wanted to do it, they would like lose their minds. Uh, so a lot of hypo- hypocrisy with that. I just did everything, uh, Miriam. I did like uh, graphic design. I did uh, video editing. I did even wedding photography. Uh, I did. Uh, Uh, corporate training corporate videos anything i could just make a living not doing the the regular gig i did and thankfully after theater and film stand up worked out so i'm still here <laughs> but if you had like a bollywood poster that you would like because i know oh. you're very big on animation and your intros are very very good and oh, thank you so if you had to choose one bollywood movie poster which one would that be you're very creative so i know Uh, one existing Bollywood movie poster, yeah, yeah. dude. I I can tell you right, Om Shanti Om, dude. What a <laughs> it's the only poster I remember. They really worked on that poster. Uh, I just remember like like Deepika Padukone, like this giant Deepika Padukone, and Charak is like this below and beautiful typography. It's my favorite poster. You know, Deepika also, Deepika also. So yes. so what we do is we do Bollywood posters, by the way, for our shows here in Dubai. So I oh. remember my co-host, my then co-host, like some six years, ten years ago. Uh, we actually recreated the Bollywood poster of Om Shanti Om with me posing as Shahrukh Khan and you know Malik. I'm jealous. <laughs> Can I get the number of this person? Can they do one for my Dubai show? Most definitely yes. Most definitely yes. <laughs> I would I would share it. Please please. Uh, I'm serious. I'm not kidding. <laughs> sure, we can we can definitely hook you up with this person for sure. Please 100%. do. Awesome. Kenny, you're performing in Dubai. I remember the last time when I was watching your show. It was so interesting because you know you're very clever. Because one of the most common things here in Dubai is the announcement in Dubai Metro, which says doors closing, doors opening, and you did the Arabic version of that. I very, very clearly remember, and that had the entire uh, theater, you know, applauding for you. When you when you are taking your show, you know, which you have kind of written over a period of months and years, sometimes do you do you uh, purposely try to add these local tidbits in your in your act so that you can get like an applause from the audience yeah i think it's like uh, um, when you go to like a musician's concert and uh, they just mention 
your city i don't know why it sounds very like uh, you know simple and a little dumb but i don't know people just get very happy so when i go to concerts in bangalore and mumbai and they say how are you doing in mumbai and i'm like hey he brought us up <laughs> you know like i don't know what it is so i always try to uh, put some bit from the city uh, i'm performing in into the show i think it kind of also makes people feel like you you, you kind of uh, acknowledge them and you kind of wrote a custom high for them and right. uh, and also i mean it's what i do it's i can't even help it it's like if i land and even if it's like two hours before the show i land something's going to happen that catches my eye that i just bring up uh it's it's the best job in the world lokesh where you can just <laughs> do whatever you want i don't have a boss i don't finish the show and they like why did you make that uh, dubai joke i'm like uh <laughs> this is my show i can do whatever i want so it's fun yeah. i think uh, mariam's I can't hear you anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure. I mean, everyone knows you make everybody laugh. But has there been a time where you're trying to resonate with your audience? Sorry, sorry. Maybe uh, is it just me or Lokesh? Is her voice going down? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, her voice is going down. I guess. Can you be a little closer, Mariam? I thought it was my. I, I think I it's cancelling out your voice. Okay. Can you hear me now? slightly better no oh. still bad no mario you can whatsapp your question to me and i will ask that question <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> have you ever can you hear me <laughs> Yeah, now we, we can. can. Now we can. Also, it just it is triggered by by your frustration. I think when you got extra frustrated, start working. I've just started using a Mac, so I think I should go back to my. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Fair, fair. So okay, like you said that you know you think about the city that you're performing at, but have yes. you resonate with your audience and not worked out like a joke that you're like, okay, people are gonna laugh at this and nobody laughs. Like, has that ever? ever yeah. Happened? So. I get this question a lot, and it usually comes from um, uh, people who are not stand-up comedians. Like I think, uh, which is I kind of the illusion we create that we're just coming on stage and I'm just talking, man. All of this is just improvised, but it's not. Like everything, every joke has been written and rewritten. I'm not exaggerating. Hundred and fifty times, any joke you've heard, uh, even a three-minute joke, we have done it, or I have done it. I'll speak for myself. A hundred and fifty times before I even charge for the ticket to see me. So we do it at open mics. So you do it 150 times. You have gone through the entire range of, oh, this part I'm losing the audience. This part the audience likes. This part audience wants more. So I've done those iterations and experiments and trials. It's the only profession in the world where the draft has to be written and performed in front of the audience. Like with writing or music, you can sit in your house and you can write it out. You can rewrite it or you practice your song and then you perform. Stand up is not like that. You can't just prepare your joke and be like it's ready. Final draft, and then you perform. It'll tank, because that's why it never lets you relax. This is a very unforgiving feel. So the first time you get the idea for the joke, the first draft where it's just rough and long, that's when you do it on stage, and then you do it again, do it again. So that's why by the time I come on stage, I know exactly where I'm going to get the laughs. I know exactly where people are going to be listening, where they're going to be shocked. Like it's it's so rhythmic. Like Abhishek, who's my manager. we uh, it's like uh, it's an unconscious trigger where we both know when the laugh's going to come and we just wait for the laugh because you know this laugh is 3 seconds long this laugh is a few seconds long um but we pretend we give the vibe that it's uh, oh i'm just uh, i'm just talking because it'll be boring to see somebody be so you know what giving like a speech sorry you saying again your voice is uh, what about crowd work crowd oh so crowd work is a different beast now again uh, the perception of crowd work you need to remember just like instagram comedians are only putting the crowd work that worked <laughs> okay <laughs> so then you see it online you're like wow this is great yeah that one was great but if you went to the comedians crowd work show and they did about 20 uh, it's like a very violent up and down kind of graph where uh for the first 10 minutes is going great and for the next 10 minutes it's kind of boring and then another 5 minutes is great um yeah so crowd work is completely unpredictable but then the risk and reward is the same like i guess the audience enjoys it when it works 
they really enjoyed when it works but when uh, you talk to somebody and they're just not vibing and you're not vibing it's quite painful that's why i personally would never charge people uh, to come for a crowd work show um, i usually do this small crowd work shows with 50 people and it's like one fourth the cost because it's so unpredictable but we put elements of it of course in a show mm-hmm. and uh, if it doesn't work i can just go back to my material that works fine so we kind of sprinkle it but when it works oh my god it's beautiful it's like you know it's like lighting in a bottle i guess that's a good segue for the next question kenny i i feel um, you know all the professions these days we we all have like a digital presence like being yes. radio presenters we have a little bit of digital presence you know on instagram on x on youtube and all that i mean there are pilots who are influencers right yeah um, as a as a stand up comedian you know you're you're largely writing jokes you're write, you're writing one hour special that you can perform on stage on different ott platforms and all that that's your main job but you're also trying to like kind of market yourself on instagram and other platforms as well i i want to know how the whole craft changes when you're let's say writing a one and a half minute sketch for a for an instagram reel versus when you're writing the entire one hour special versus when you have brand deals you know you're trying yeah. to like incorporate humor there as well i mean how does it work differently one and and what do you enjoy the most but well, that's an awesome question i think it's also it's such a well crafted question because i feel like you do the same i'm sure like uh, radio is your main thing and you also do content creation so um yeah i keep telling my comedian friends who kind of struggle with doing both that it is supposed to be hard because it's two separate jobs uh we are doing two jobs we are being a stand up comedian and we're also being a content creator and holy like it's a very 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 hard to do both so you have to do one so uh i've kind of uh, found a balance like during the day i'm a content creator and at night i'm a stand up comedian because most shows happen in the evening so it's i've i've literally divided my life into two so when i in the day i write sketches and sketches honestly is is far easier far far easier than stand up um i have done a sketch show also with kanan gil called sketchy behavior which is on prime video right. and uh, it is so much easier because um for video if you do live sketch another beast but for video because first of all you have access to editing so i can play two characters three characters four characters i have access to music access to effects uh one very funny thing with sketches you can just write what the premise is so if you say shopkeeper not giving you change is the title of the video so you know what the video is about and then i can just do shopkeeper and i can do customer but when you do it on if i do the same joke on stage you can't just be like hey guys this next joke is about shopkeeper not giving st- uh, change and this is the joke <laughs> and they'll be like are you insane you have to kind of you can through the joke you have to explain the premise explain i am the customer so uh and you don't have the pressure of audience reaction you can edit you can take retakes being in a uh, content creator i enjoy uh, a lot because i don't have to travel i don't have to run from the audience and i can be at home and i can have complete control so it, it is very very hard to do both and unfortunately uh, or fortunately in this day and age you have to do both because um, if you're fine with doing stand up and maybe not sell a lot of tickets because people don't know you exist then by all means just be a comedian but if you do care about uh, people spending money on you to watch you or um, have a following then you kind of have to do both it's mm-hmm. speaking speaking of both uh, there's something that I actually want to ask you now in a in a place in the world where a lot of people are actually laughing at people swearing you know you see a lot of uh, comedians Ooh. swearing yes. they're just swearing they're, and people are laughing at that right yeah yeah your piece uh you don't have hindi gali i must say because these days a lot of people laugh at all of those things what yes. is the kind of balance that you create uh, by pushing those boundaries and of course with humor especially where you're going let it be a dubai a, m- a little more conservative place i don't know sure. you know according to the rules and regulations of the country how do you sure. balance that uh you know keeping everything in mind that's an awesome question i guess i just want to say the questions have been awesome very unique questions i don't usually get asked this is actually a very conscious thing i did from the beginning of my career that i'm going to be clean and one of the primary reasons was as kind of inspired heavily by Jerry Seinfeld it was the first comedian i saw when i was young and um 
I also realize I have had phases where I've done like dirty jokes and uh, I didn't enjoy it as much doing it on stage. I love doing it with my friends. Yeah. but on stage i don't know i didn't get that joy and i felt like the creative restriction of not it's not just swearing i mean it's also like the topic like i have clean topics as well and uh, i found it ni- a nice challenge to be like oh how do i make a joke about <laughs> chai and biscuits and um everyday stuff that we all experience it's very i mean this is my opinion it's very easy to get a laugh through swearing or through talking about taboo subjects because most of the reaction is the release of stress or tension from the audience that oh he's talking about something that we are not allowed to talk or that you know the childhood glee of oh he's swearing on stage wow we're not allowed to swear and yeah. nothing wrong with that but that's a big reason of getting that laugh as well so some days i i really get frustrated with this imposed restriction i put on myself i'll go on a comedy festival one guy will go up and he's just making like sex jokes and swearing and seeing all the gallies and yeah people are like applauding and then i go and i'm like yeah hey, it's so hard to find parking right <laughs> now who's this guy and i get frustrated i'm like man i can't reach that uh, level of uh, reaction but but it's okay this is the path i've chosen and i get a lot of joy from uh, if you're coming for the show in dubai on 14th you'll see my audience i have um, 12 year olds i have 60 year olds I have uh, a lot of women in my show. Um so I love that. I love the fact that I look across the audience and everybody's having a good time and that gives me far more satisfaction than losing out on a few gali laughs, you know. We've actually no, I mean, specifically asked you this because we go through the same thing every day on the radio where yes. we really make people laugh because of gali. Stuff. It's worth it. I think it's worth <laughs> it's it because worth then it. no then when the restriction is lifted it's like a walk in the park, you know. Yeah. Exactly. No, and it's also interesting that with with the restrictions, with the self-imposed restrictions that you've had, you you know you made a mark for yourself in the comedy circuit, which is absolutely fantastic. So, uh, the the Dubai Comedy Festival show is called Professor of Tom Foolery, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. And uh, and you know uh, I was actually on the Dubai Comedy Festival website, and it said uh, comedy with a musical twist. Yes. So, can we like can could you tell so us in- what exactly is going to happen on the 14th? Also I didn't react to your nice compliment thank you Lokesh for saying that uh the show actually uh I I did the show in Dubai last year in Feb and uh, we're we're coming back with it cuz this is volume 2 of Professor of Tom Foolery and in the earlier version there was no music and most of my stand up shows have music comedy as well and I was like I'm coming back it's the same show let me add a, an, an extra you know a novelty factor to it in case people want to see the show again there's a little treat for them and if people have never seen the show before they get that the best parts of the older show and some new music uh, so if you guys are coming to the show you'll see towards the end of the show i kind of do music and obviously that gets a lovely reaction and people are very um, they're very excited cuz uh, very few comedians do music comedy and i really enjoy it. it's it's so much fun that i almost feel like i'm cheating like uh, it's so f- seamlessly you know um smooth when we go from comedy to music and music to comedy uh, i really love doing it on stage and i have way too much fun so i thought why not uh, bring it to the opera house also it's such a incredibly beautiful venue yeah. so like i have to bring something special for this before we yeah, let you go yeah, have you yeah. have you got a list of things from your friends and family that you're going to dubai get us an iphone get us dates get us perfumes yeah, does that happen all in that order exact same order <laughs> uh i will do everything except the iphones i'm like i can't carry <laughs> dates and all i'll get dates chocolates fair good for health dates you know dates and dry fruits i'll get you then yeah we'll recommend lovely. some nice places where you can go and shop for a for a good bargain thank you thank you It was lovely talking to you, Kenny, and I feel like you know on the fourteenth of April we're obviously going to be there uh, because City One Zero One Six is the official radio partner for the Bike Com- Comedy Fest. Awesome! Extra from our team is actually going to be hosting the show, so good Ooh. luck to you, and we are waiting for you on stage at the opera. Thank you, and please come. I'm expecting you guys to yes. uh, to be there. For sure. Awesome. Front rows cheering loud for you. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you guys. Awesome. Yeah, what a lovely interview. Can you such a sweetheart? Oh, so you guys and the questions are awesome.